So I have the Xtool D1 laser cutter, and it has one major problem. When cutting through materials, it will melt or burn whatever's underneath, and I don't really want that. So let's fix that with this metal plate and this honeycomb cutting surface from Xtool. And it has two built-in rulers that come in really handy for sizing and placement of your materials. Setup on this is pretty easy, just remove the protective film from the metal sheet. The honeycomb cutting sheet has some sharp corners, and they provide some little bumpers to put on there to protect you from getting cut or scratching things up. You just have to put some 3M adhesive to them and stick them onto all the corners, top and bottom. It also has these magnetic feet that you can attach to it that will make an air gap underneath everything, allowing all of the fumes and smoke to be able to come out and fresh air to come in. And here's the full setup all put together. You do have to use the feet extenders to raise up the laser a little bit more to be able to use this, but everything is pretty much good to go now. So let me try actually cutting something out. And from the looks of it, this is having no problems whatsoever, and I'm not burning anything underneath it. So pretty much a win-win. And it looks like the test cut came out pretty clean with no charring or anything on the back of it. So you might have noticed that there was a lot of smoke when cutting this. So I use this to ventilate my work area. You can use a box fan and a window, but mine just kind of goes in through here and up and out. Anytime you're using a laser, you're going to want to test your materials and see what settings are going to be best for you. And as you can see on both of these, they worked, but they left a lot of charring behind. So let's fix that with another add-on that you can do to this laser, which is a air assist kit. And this comes with everything you need to get it installed and working, and it's very straightforward and simple to set up. Just connect one of the clear tubes to the air pump, and then the black and blue hose connector to that, and then the air line goes inside of that. And just make sure it slides in place, and if you pull a little bit, it shouldn't come out. Then you just need to loosen the two grub screws that hold in the acrylic shield and remove it. You also have to remove the two screws on the top of the laser module, and replace them with the two longer ones with the kit and this new bracket. With that done, I could put the little air cone onto the laser and tighten it down with one screw. And just make sure the flat side is facing where the new bracket is. And that way it'll line up with the hole in the new acrylic shield. This should just be able to slide back on and tighten up your grub screws on it, just don't over tighten them. With all that done, just flip this to the side so the hole is facing up. And then you can put in the last air fitting. You can snug this up with some pliers if you want to. Then you can just plug in your laser module and install it back on the machine. And the last thing you need to do is install your air line, and you're pretty much good to go. Just make sure to push it all the way down so it's not leaking any air and all the air is going to the right place. And just make sure your air line is off your cutting area. This is a little bit of a messy setup, and it didn't come with any zip ties to clean it up, so I will have to change that later on. But for now, this should work. So with all that installed, I'm going to recut my test cards and see how much has changed, if anything. And as you can see, this is already doing a lot better, and it's much cleaner. And the air assist system is doing its job by pushing away any of the smoke or ash. And it also helps put out any flare-ups if there were any. And you can see side by side how much cleaner this came out. Besides the last row, which I kind of messed up on and told it to fill instead of cut. And if we look over at the engraving one, you can see how much cleaner the air assisted one is versus the non air assisted. So when you're doing any type of engraving work, it's going to be much cleaner. I was supplied with some materials from Xtool, like this 3mm plywood, so I wanted to see how well it would cut and engrave on this. And honestly, I wasn't disappointed. The engraving came out really nice, and the cutting had to be done in two passes to go all the way through this at about 4 millimeters per second at 100% power. And with some adjustment, I was able to get my engraving lines to be really nice and sharp. And of course, I used my material cards to figure out the settings that would work perfectly with this material. And you're not only limited to doing wood. You can also engrave on coated metals or stainless steel. These are some metal business card blanks. So you can etch your own business cards and pass out metal cards if you wanted to. And this sample etching on this card came out really nice. I made sure to do some fill work along with line work so I could see the difference and how they would look. But this doesn't mean that you can engrave on all metals. So this is a solid sheet of silver and I tried the same thing on max settings as slow as possible and it didn't even leave a mark on it. So another thing that this can't do is cut clear acrylic. So this has some paper backing but this is completely clear and watch what happens. As you can see, it's marked, but there is no marks in the acrylic. And if we flip it around, the paper is cut, and the acrylic where it was touching it is melted. But other than that, you can't cut clear acrylic. But you can mark and cut opaque acrylic. With that being said, it's not going to be that clean of a cut, because you're more or less melting it away, unlike a CO2 laser that is kind of vaporizing it as it goes. 
but obviously you can do it. And just as an example, here's something useful that I cut out and put together, along with all of the earrings that are on here. And there's a ton of different free or paid templates online that you can use to make things for yourself. And if you're looking for anything I use in this video, I'll have links to everything in the description below.